Hey guys, how hard is it to put a Truma Vario heat into a Jayco Silver line? Well, part of it's quite easy and part of it's quite difficult. But anyway, I'll show you how we did it. Alrighty, so we'll start off uh, Silver line Jayco. We're going to put the Truma Vario heat in there. It's already in there. Now let's just start off with the easy part first. So I'll show you that now. So it's got the beautiful, um, it's got the beautiful slide out on here. Now that's that's where the bed is. Okay, so the the actual bed is there that slides out, so it gives you a bit more room so you can walk around. Okay, so you know, sometimes they have lounges, but this one and and he wanted the um, he wanted it installed under the bed, um, the the Truma Vario heat. So here we go. We've got the um, the vent coming out the side. Okay, and that goes through inside, and I'll show you that in a second. Now he got the black one. Um, the reason he got the black one is to annoy me a little bit. No, nah, not really. He's um, he got it because it was cheaper. I don't know it was like five or six hundred bucks cheaper. So. I was thinking maybe I should get the one that had the black one on the had the black caravan with the white one to ring him up, and maybe they can just swap the grates, swap the uh, you know the, the flu covers over the cows, and then everybody's happy again, and I'll be a bit happier as well. But anyway, it looks all right because there is a bit of black on the silver line, you know. I do, I do like the look of them. Um, so easy part first. Let's go inside, and I'll show you. Okay, so here's the inside of the van. Beautiful leather couches, top notch everything, mate. Um, now, mark my customer. Great bloke. You know why? Because he took the mattress out, which was great. Didn't have to deal with that going up in the air and, you know, having to deal with that while we're trying to work underneath and having our toilet. Because one thing I didn't realise, by taking the mattress out, that bed stayed up all the time, which was good because there was no weight on it. But the other thing is, is all that light, the light coming through, see, it's just shining beautifully. So I've got perfect amount of light for me and Glenn to work in and stuff. So really appreciate it, Mark. You did a great job. Uh, yeah, love this. Great, great. I've got great customers. Great customers. Anyway, here's the setup here. You can see here it is. And as you can see, that's where we just snuck it through, through there, um, underneath the, sort of out the side here. So it sort of goes on a bit of an angle and I've, I've used this black silicon and I reckon it looks amazing. And it heads out there and so that's where the, the cowl is. So it comes through like this. Um, yeah, and now Glenn's got all his wiring in there somewhere. So this is, this is his Glenn's wiring going to this, the box down here and stuff like that. So um, you can't even see really what's done and what's not because he's used that, you know, he's got his weaving machine and stuff. So that's the, um, so it sucks the cool air, you know, all the air from outside and then pushes the, the fumes out, out that way sort of thing. So that's that line. Um, the gas line, I was going to run, run it through down into here, but mate, uh, underneath, this is what I'm talking about, the hard bit, underneath the suspension, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on underneath. And so I ended up bringing over here, which is in between the two, the wheels and the suspension, and that just missed the water, yeah, you know, the water tank and, and all the rest of the stuff, but um, very difficult to uh, get it under there, even to get under there, because it's a road man. And uh, this is the, you know, where the hot air comes out after it's heated, and it pops off down this way. So we just managed to stick it in here between the safe and everything. So he, here, he wanted it to sort of push out that way, so when he's sitting, um, yeah, because you can understand, if it comes out straight out the front, it's just gonna go into the cupboard and stuff, so that's a really, really good option. You can see where it's come come down there, that's where it's coming out. So yeah, beautiful, neat, neat finish, and that's the isolation, obviously. Turn it off when you when you need to. And then um, Glenn usually follows my wiring along and he's and he's ducked it into the cupboard there somehow. I don't know how he's done that, but this is where the controller has uh, ended up, which is um, yeah, super easy. Okay, let's move on to the hard part I was talking about um, and why it was quite a difficult and a bit time consuming. Alrighty, so this is the harder part that was that was quite difficult and um why was it so hard is because the silver line is i think it's the ducks top of the range sort of jayco um van and so it's got all the bells and whistles inside and also outside and mostly underneath that's the that's the problem they got water tanks and gray water tanks and lines running everywhere um so it was and like sweet suspension it's, it's a it's a road van but it's you know it's got that trailing arm suspension and stuff like that and so what I'll do is I'll go under there and then I'll see, I'll, I'll see, I'll show you how I was trying to get, get stuff in there. So I don't know if you can see that. This is, oh, this is one of the water tanks here and then all the suspensions here and all the T's and copper and everything, that was all, this is where the, um, where the existing line was here. So I had to weld this T in next to the plastic water tank and all this cabling here, all that had to be protected and, and so I had to weld a T in there which is, you know, super hard. You don't want the van to catch on fire and everything. And then there's all the gas valves and everything. It's all, 
all sort of set, you know, sealed up. So I had to wait, well, well to tee in there. And that one goes all the way down. And then I had to get it through. I didn't really want to bring it um, underneath this, uh, un underneath this, because, you know, it could copper your rocks. It would have been fine to do that because there's, you know, the suspension in here. So I managed to get it up the top there and it came through. See, you can see that. If I get it pull down there a bit, sorry if that's a bit shaky. Um, and then I managed, because I checked it with my finger before, see if I could get my fingers through. I said, yeah, that, that'll work. So put it through that one as well. And then I have to go all the way around that way. And all the way, and that's where it goes up under the bed there. Okay, so totally protected. And you can see, just, just stuff everywhere. Another tank out the back. So I don't even know what that is. I wonder what that is. I don't know. Anyway, probably some super ABS something or other. And so that's what I've done to get it, get it all through there. Um, just get around. Oh, so it's very difficult, you know. Lucky, you know, if I was any bigger in the stomach, I wouldn't fit. You know, normally I can roll around on this thing, but anyway, I'm just gonna. I've got my trolley to roll around, but I wouldn't fit with my with my gut. So anyway, that's why it was super difficult. And the other thing was that the um, when I put it on test, because as gas fitters, you have to test it before you start. It's leaking somewhere, right? And so. I was going back and forth trying to find this leak and you know turning off all the valves in it and it ended up so this is the little gas locker so very hard to work in there and i had a regulator up in there and you can slide this out and everything so this uh, i'll show you this one of these joints somewhere in this whole contraption here was leaking slightly it's just tiny you wouldn't even be able to smell it right here and another thing he had was uh these things too so had had these on the bottles as well they're the you know the the flow stop ones and that tells you how you know how much thing you got in so one of those could have been leaking slightly as well so i took all that stuff off took the whole regulator off and then i've got a special fitting that i put on to test just the main without the regulator it was all sweet so then i um, ran the new line from the trimmer all the way to the front welded it in tested it again all sweet put the new regulator on there put it up tested it it was all fine and then when i turned it all on and we were commissioning it i could smell gas and then I went round to have a look inside. Uh, I walked past the box and I could smell a bit of gas there. Sprayed some soap on it. It's never happened to me before. But it was leaking from the edge of the radiator. It's been clamped, so something's gone wrong there. So I took it off, had another one luckily, put that on. Now that's all fine. So that was a bit of pain, but very hard to work inside the, the box as well. You know, when they're out the front, on, on the front of the van, they're, they're heaps easier to work on. But that was difficult. But once we got all that sorted, it was all fine. Clipped it all up and um, got it commissioned. Uh, Glenn from next door ran all the wires. So all commissioned, mate, heats up so quickly, these things. They're amazing. You know, you don't have to ca carry any diesel with you or anything like that. So anyway, that is the install of the um, Truma Vario heat in the Jayco Silver line. I wanna, yeah, thanks uh, Mark for giving us, a, giving us a crack at this. It's done a great job, haven't damaged anything, which is great, always. And um, yeah, looking forward to you telling me how it goes and uh, in those, you know, when you're out looking at wildflowers, whatever your retirees do out there, looking for gold in the middle of the middle of uh, the desert when it's freezing cold, you'd be snug as a bug in a rug in the uh, van. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Play the logo. Catch ya.